All right, here we go. It's that time of year when all of these beautiful snow plows and snow plow parts that get used and abused and cutting edges worn down and they still plow without a cutting edge on uh, come to a welder. So we have these spring brackets that are pretty much uh, toasted on both sides. Ran it without the, a new cutting edge, so that's what happens. Um, we got cracks, we got this is broke, it's cracked, that's cracked over there. We've got the tractor started so we can lift this up a little higher, but yeah, when you live up this way or anywhere where it snows and you get stuff like this. Now this plow is definitely not in horrible shape. Um, it's not in great shape by any means. All these pins and bushings, this is a V-plow, so it pivots right here. These are all worn out like this. This is cracked. I'm gonna try to bend that back up for him. This pin's bent, um, stuff like that. So this is a customer who brought this to me. New guy, actually, new customer, never worked for him before. Found me on Instagram. So if anyone, uh, to all the people ask how to get jobs, I use Instagram mostly, but uh, yeah. He says these V plows are probably about thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars brand new. And in New Jersey, we get snow, but we don't get snow every week. We've had three plowable storms this year. Um, that's three more than we had last year. Last year we had one storm that produced about an inch or two of snow all winter. So guys like this who have accounts, they're not looking to go spend fifteen grand on a new plow. So they're going to put a little money into this one. This guy is good because. He, uh, he says money is no factor. He just wants it fixed properly. So, of course, I'm not going to gouge him. I'm going to do what I can. And stay tuned to the end of the video if you guys want to watch the whole thing. Um, I'll tell you how I'm charging for this job, kind of explain how I charge jobs now. I've been getting asked that a lot lately. So let's uh, get to it. All right, we got this thing lifted up with the tractor here. Got a jack stand underneath here for safety. She's pretty sturdy, so we need to, yeah, that's really worn down. We need to replace these. I'm not sure how I wanna go about it yet. I don't really wanna cut this whole thing off, but I kinda would like to maybe cut this, cut this here, add another piece. This looks like 3 8 or half inch material. I have some of that laying around. Probably end up cutting this, rebuilding this with two gussets, so. Both sides, both sides need it, and then, we have a nice crack right there, so I'll show you guys how I go about doing cracks. I'm doing here I'm just cutting this back part off here and uh, what I'll do is I'll cut a piece that comes back out to where it was and then it only had one gusset I'm gonna put two gussets because it did bend you know from getting beaten and banged so I'll bevel this bevel the other piece tack it up square it up and then I'll put two gussets on there both sides and that should be a lot better than what it was Got two marked out. We're going five inches by two inches. I'm gonna weld it right on the back of there, and then um, 
make some gussets. But this is where the holes need to be. It was off that bottom ledge. It was three and three quarter to center, three and three quarter to center. So uh, my mag drill kind of took a crap. So I got to hand drill these and I need to drill like a five eight hole. So I think I'm just going to step them with a regular bit and then probably use a step bit. So let's try it out. This is 3.8 material. Um, I've already hit the 5.8 mark, but it's 3.8, so it's not a, you know, it's stepping. It's a step bit. So I just turned it around, flipped it over, and uh, we'll hit it from the bottom side, and then it should be good to go. <laughs> And uh, using an M12, I have a M18 non-fueled, like an old brushed one, which works great. Um, I don't have a, you can see I run Milwaukee, but these, um, I really don't like the Milwaukee drills at all. I mean, I have it on a clutch setting, and it doesn't engage the clutch. This one just seems, I don't know, I've had this for probably a few years now, and uh, I don't know. I just, I use these at work too, the contract that I work for right now has Milwaukee stuff, and I feel like the clutches don't engage ever <laughs> maybe it's a flawed design i don't know but i love milwaukee everything else but i really do not like their drills um but it is what it is that's what i have uh, i might even go grab the big one but this does it you know i if you bear down on the m12s they do uh bog down and stop but it will do it so um i don't know i've used the walt drills before i like them i'm almost temp tempted to get a different brand drill and then keep get a couple extra batteries for them and just use those instead of milwaukee stuff it kind of sucks because you have all the batteries for milwaukee things i have a lot of milwaukee things but i've even used makita drills and i like them so i'm thinking about switching my drills so we'll see Not too bad with the old chop saw. Beats a cutoff wheel and beats using the torch and cleaning everything up with a grinder. So I'm just going to round these edges off, put a bevel on here, and uh, we'll get the first one to get going here. All right, I got a little bit of a bevel on both ends here. So we're pretty much going to stick it on there like that. Get some good weld in there. I'm going to MIG it. And uh, yeah. We'll uh, tack it on there, get it squared up, and then we'll start making our gussets.
All right. Got that baby welded on there. Let's go uh, make some gussets. I'm gonna put gussets on both sides because it only had one. Can't hurt to add an extra. All right, got the gussets in. Had to trim a little bit to get them in there, but we're just uh, gonna weld these out here. And then I'll probably end up just doing the whole other side, get that taken care of. You guys kind of saw what I did here. And then we'll move on to uh, getting these cracks all uncracked. All right, you guys saw that one. You know, once you get into a rhythm, this one took me like a third of the time to do because I kind of prepped everything and I had an idea of what I wanted to do. So I'm gonna take the tractor, I'm gonna lift this back up, take the jack stand out, I'm gonna lower it back down. Um, that way I can start doing these cracks. These skins actually come off with a couple bolts and you can see like his uh, bolt situation here, but I'm gonna take those off, those skins pop right out. We'll do that right now. And uh, we'll start working on the cracks. Oh, my poor truck. One day, I drove this on Saturday to go get some oxygen and acetylene, and man, I gotta hit this with the car wash. It's a Dodge, so it's already rusted, but man, New Jersey loves the salt. sun was probably in your eyes there but let's uh take these skins off and we gotta start working on these cracks that one is mangled up i don't know how i'm gonna straighten that out we'll find out Makes it lighter, I guess, but that could be your downfall. Clean that out. Let's see what we got here. Almost looks like that's factory, but we have one major crack here. I'm gonna grind it out, weld it from both sides. We got one right here and around that pin too. I'm wondering if I just weld that up from right there, it'll pull. Regardless, that's pretty much the two spots he told me about. Everything else looked pretty good. But, uh, you know, this plow's, its life expectancy is uh, growing smaller and smaller by the season. So, we're gonna see what we can do. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's any other major cracks, so. And then actually, these springs, pardon my mess here. These are the springs that go here. Um, he can't get these very in a timely fashion. So what I'm gonna end up doing, he said he gave them to me. If he can't get them, I'm gonna cut these tabs off and weld new ones. But now that I'm looking at it, now that I'm looking at it, this piece is one piece. So I'm gonna cut the bolt out. I'm just gonna weld and build that up to where it needs to be, redrill the hole, probably do the same on the other one so instead of cutting it off because like I said 
that's uh, one piece. This one's an add-on, so I think that's what I'll do. So let's uh, get to the cracks. All right, so tackling this crack, set up the die grinder, and I just gouge that out. I'll clean this up with a wire wheel or whatever I can. I'm gonna probably put three passes on the back here. And then what I'll do is I'll back gouge with a grinder right here. Once I start hitting clean metal on the other side, I'll put a couple passes on there. Then you know you've uh, repaired the crack. And uh, this one, not too sure yet. I'll probably do the same thing. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, see how that goes. He wanted me to try to pull this back together because it's this gap's supposed to be smaller, but I took a look. These bushings, whatever, holes, this pin. I mean, you can see what someone's done before. Welded a nut to it. Oh, I'm sorry, welded a bolt to it so it doesn't slide down. Um, they're all worn. Like, there's nothing I can do. Um, maybe even shimming it, but it's still... Supposedly, he said this is not supposed to be a gap, but I kind of find that hard to believe. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. But there's so much play in here that there's nothing I can do with that. So it's just going to have to be how it is. But I can at least get the cracks repaired. So that way he, uh, you know, this thing doesn't break apart. So let me get that cleaned up and uh, we'll get the weld. All right, I'd say that uh, is pretty good. Welding her in there pretty hot. So, I love working out in the snow and when I don't have a big shop and I don't have equipment to, uh, you know, I love working out in outside of my garage. You guys know, I work out of a garage. It's uh, a little cumbersome sometimes. It's unfortunate I don't have like a forklift my little tractor can't lift up much i can't fit most things in my shop so i find myself working out here in the snow and the rain but hey it is what it is that's uh kind of what i got going on here so now what we'll do is uh still see the crack actually showed itself a little more out here now that we got some heat on it so what i'm going to do is going to take a grinder and i'll just back gouge that to the weld i just did and then weld that out and that's done Got it gouged out. Stopped seeing my uh, separation line or where the crack was, which means I'm into the new weld I just put in. So, get this side welded up. pretty good I am gonna grind this flush so that uh, stainless steel uh, oh, that stainless steel skin can sit in there nice so it is gonna end up getting flushed out right there so let's uh, try to get to the other one
there we go. That's all ground out, hopefully. We got as much as we needed on that. And then uh, we'll do the same thing. All right, I got that welded. And I put some heavy ones on the back here. That ain't going nowhere. I'll see if that helps. But um, I'm pretty sure the plow part of this is done. Like I said, I'm not going to be able to do much with uh, wallered out holes. But that part's done. We're into this about almost three and a half hours so far. So if you guys are still around, wait till the end. I'm going to finish up uh, these springs. I'm going to do those springs. I'll show you what I'm going on here. Or I'll show you what I got going on with them. And then at the end of the video, I'll kind of explain how I, uh, how I price things, how I charge people. A lot of people have been asking. So stick around to the end. Watch the end. And, and a little statistic, about 20% of my views are from subscribers. So if you guys like what you're seeing, please uh, hit the subscribe button. It helps me a lot. Helps me uh, keep making videos for people that like it. You know, I do make money on these jobs, but uh, the YouTube's kind of fun. So help me out there a little bit. That'd be nice. And uh, if you're not subscribed, I'm uh, closing up on 10,000 subscribers. And I think I'm doing some sort of giveaway. I don't know what it is, kind of just crossed my mind uh, a couple days ago. So make sure you're subscribed to uh, catch what kind of giveaway we might do. So let's uh, get everything cleaned up outside and yeah, we'll start these springs. All right, back here the next day. Got to take care of these springs. Someone just like welded these things on. <sighs> I don't know. I mentioned before, this is one piece. My plan was to just cut these off. I can still cut that one off and remake it, but this, if I cut this, I'm kind of compromising, I suppose, I'm compromising this whole thing, and I'm not, I'm not taking this spring apart, it's a lot more involved than, um, you know, what I want to do, I'm a welder, I'm not a mechanic, quite frankly, he should have taken this to a plow shop, but hey, listen, I'll take the work, do what I can, uh, he'll probably have to take it to a plow shop if he wants to get that thing to close better, but... Like I said, I'm just uh, here to weld. I'm not really a mechanic by any means. So let's at least cut this off with the bandsaw and see what we can do. All right, got that cut out. Um, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm gonna weld this up. Um, it's really, I, I'm going to cut this junk off. And I'm just going to weld it up, maybe kind of over overkill it a little bit, clean it up with a flap disc, and then I'll redrill the holes with a drill bit. So it's... Better than, uh, you know, I think it's going to be a little less problematic if I try cutting this and messing with this. That'll take me probably 10 minutes to just tack and spot weld this to get it to a good form and then redrill it. All right, it's uh, working out okay, actually. I got that one side done. I'm going to clean the inside up. It's very crude, um, mind you, just building this up, but... I'll probably put a couple more passes on here just to really beef it up, get my hole drilled, and uh, yeah, the tops of these holes were still good, so if I can get a good contour on that, I think we're going to be in good shape, so let's do it. There it is guys i ain't getting too crazy with it the holes line up that's all that matters uh this thing goes on the bottom and if this guy takes care of this plow which most of the guys don't this should never scrape the ground the whole reason i'm doing all this is because these cutting edges probably have an inch and a half rubbed off of them you're supposed to replace these you know you, guys just run them and then i've had guys come in with out cutting edges and they just run it on the mold board or whatever it's called so that's good i got a lot of welding there built it back up i got to do the other one we're going to put them on 
give it a little paint and uh call this done call him up tell him to come get his plow and get my money so uh i'll finish that one and i'll kind of go over uh to you guys how i'm charging for this and uh hopefully that helps some of you all right guys quick little question i picked this miller blue star up and i uh, kind of took it apart ran everything's good kind of curious if you guys want to see me uh make a video on possibly refurbishing this machine don't know what i'm going to do with it yet got it for another good smoking deal so leave in the comments if you want to see a video of me fixing that old welder up and maybe uh using it throwing it in uh you know service or something or kind of want to flip it make my money got it for a pretty good good deal um might need uh, a couple card parts but let me know in the comments if you want to see a video so i had a gentleman uh email me uh about a month or two ago he owns a um like a hand wipes company called uh greasy's garage he sent me out some stuff i told him i'd try it out the hand wipes hand cleaners they're very good actually they have a nice like very faint scent to them this is like uh there you go knuckle butter dry hands stuff like that i'm gonna link it down in the description go check it out uh it's veteran owned he's a uh u.s veteran so i like to support you know veterans of this country so i told him i'd try it out uh give him a little shout out in the video but go check that out if you guys uh you know want some hand wipes those are always good to have in the shop again something that uh is useful to me in a welding shop so i'll promote it but now let's get to the end here everything's finished i'm going to explain to you guys how i charge jobs now all right guys got the second one done it looks uh pretty good actually but that's going to go on the other side here just got to grab a bolt get it on well, actually that's the side to put that one on. it's going to go right there but um pretty much this job is wrapped up <sighs> hey uh I've been uh, texting them about the slop in the middle with the pins and the pipe there. You know, he's kind of like, oh, what do we need to do? So I told him, I said, it needs a rebuild, a complete rebuild from the scratch. You need to cut all that stuff out. New pipe, new bushings, new pin. Um, so I told him, I was like, listen, uh, you guys see what I'm working with here. I, I don't mind the work. I like the work, but that's uh, a little more in depth than what my kind of not my capabilities i can do it uh i just like you know if i had a lift if i had something to lift this it's just it would take me way long if he brought it to a snowplow shop i think they can bang it out in a day it would take me a day or two probably so whatever i think he's good he's gonna come get it tomorrow uh so that's pretty much a job well done and wrapped up all right guys now to the end here i keep telling you guys how i uh i'm gonna tell you how i charge so pretty much now any job that i get that comes to the door or i take my truck to uh, i'm charging by the hour i give them my hourly rate which everyone's hourly rate is different everywhere you go but i have a feeling everyone's kind of in the same ballpark you guys can probably guess what i charge an hour but this job took me six hours so six times my hourly rate plus like 20 bucks for the metal i use because i'm not going to give them the metal for free but this guy when he messaged me on instagram and that's also how i've been getting a lot of work is through instagram because that's what i do i don't own a business i do this on the side so my mcf welding youtube instagram it's all just a name for the welding i do and i follow a lot of landscapers and people so they see me they see i'm local that's how i get a lot of work for the people who are asking that but this is a great customer because he dropped it off. I had told him my hourly rate prior to him coming. He said, okay, no problem. And he dropped it off. We went over a couple things and he said, let me know how much I owe you when you're done. So he didn't come out and say money's not an issue. Obviously, I'm not going to spend 12 hours on this and charge him for 12 hours of labor. You know, don't, don't get carried away with it. This took me about five and a half, six hours. He's got a little something for me to tack on his truck when he gets here. So call it six hours. And those are the kind of customers you want. The guys who say, when you tell them you're hourly, they don't even bat an eye. They say, all right, I'll bring it over. Just let me know how much I owe you when you're done. That's pretty much how I charge now. If people don't want to go for it, I don't need the, I don't need those jobs. I, I This is side work for me. I have a day job, so I don't need the work. I mean, I like the work. I don't need it because I make a living you know, as a fitter, but that's what I do. I charge per hour, cash rate, and 
yeah, I know a lot of people have been asking me, oh, what did you charge for this? What did you charge for that? Uh, everyone's different. I charge different than everyone else. You know, I, it's just what I charge and that's how I do things now because I've given people prices on stuff when I first started and even as of late recently, a year or two ago, and like I spent way too much time on it and I didn't make what I wanted. So now I just tell people, this is what I make an hour. I'll let you know when I'm done, how many hours total. Most people go for it. Some people are like, oh, I kind of need a price. So, you know, I just kind of stay away from those people or I'll just shoot the price really high. And uh, if they go for it, great. But I know a lot of people have been asking, so there's that. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I got me a nice little toolbox here that I just picked up from the old, you know. Uh, I'm actually going to get rid of this cart. I don't really care for it after I've used it. So if anyone's local to New Jersey, where I'm at, uh, I'm going to be selling this cart. Not, not the welder, just a cart empty for 250 bucks. So message me, email me if you live in the Jersey area, Pennsylvania, New York. I'm going to get rid of it. It just doesn't suit my needs. I'm going to put the TIG welder underneath the table and put my argon down there. And I'm actually going to build me a cart for the MIG welder with big casters on it. So it'd be easier to get out in the snow driveway. So but this is all going to get all my welding stuff. Pretty much everything that's in here is going to go in here. Some hand tools, all that stuff. I just picked it up the other day. So that's a wrap, guys. I hope you enjoyed. I hope it explained or I hope I was able to help people out. Um on maybe what they need to charge or I don't know if I'm even helping people to figure out what they need to charge but uh, maybe just a little insight and what kind of customers you should be targeting as a side hustle welder like myself so it's uh, Wednesday I actually have this week off so I'm gonna go do like four other side jobs that I actually have to do and hopefully I can film some so I'll catch you guys on the next video see you later